So I'm here today with Lizzie Billington, and Lizzie is the owner and master distiller at Wild Fox Distillery. Welcome, Lizzie. Great to see you. Yeah, you too, Mick. So tell us all about Wild Fox Distillery. What's it all about? What's it all about? Um, so Wild Fox Distillery, um, first and foremost, is um, a gin distillery. We're based here on our fourth generation farm in a little hamlet called Ingle White in rural Lancashire. And here we um, grow, harvest, distill five all year round recipes of gin. And how long have you been going? So uh, we officially launched in April 2019, so we're just approaching our fifth birthday. And how's things progressing? Yeah, good. Yeah, always different. Taking a turn um, each and every month. Um, I will say that we're a very reactive <laughs> business. We don't say we don't say no to anything. Um, and that's led us into different areas of the business that we perhaps weren't expecting to do when we initially set up. But yeah, can't complain. All very good. So uh, tell us a bit about the products that you supply and produce. So we do five all year round recipes. So the main thing about our gin is that it's a natural distilled product. So um, we don't, what we call flavour, so we don't add anything post-distillation to um, flavour the gin in the way of sugar syrups, um, essences, oils, etc. So um, we do um, a signature gin, which is like a hero recipe. It's really zesty and herbaceous. Uh, we do a main event, which is similar, um, but it's more Mediterranean in style with um, being distilled with ruby grapefruit, basil, mint and rosemary. So quite herbaceous, really good with a meal. Then we do a fun and fruity rhubarb and elderflower, but again, very different to a rhubarb liqueur. Um, in the fact that it's really dry, fruity and floral. Then we've got our 12 ball, which is our strongest gin um, at 45%, and that's an orange zest and ginger root distillation. And then we have a very unusual um, cascade dark spice gin, um, which we call it's a rum do, as we'd say in Lancashire. It's a rum do, yeah, I love it. It's a rum do, a bit like me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what type of customers have you got? So we only supply um, to the independent sector. So um, we are national, although very sporadic, sort of no method to it. Don't mind saying that. I've um, always sort of said I'm a bit of a maverick um, in business. Um, but I think the, the main thing is the customers we've got, we've met them all face to face, whether that's at national shows, um, through other connections, um, a lot of um, of our um retail stockists have come from um, connections in the farming world which is really great because they can retell what we're doing here with the same passion as that we've got um, and then also um, to the public as well so direct the public and that is through coming into the distillery and um, through our website and um, through shows both both locally and nationally as well. So when you say independence is that like um, independence? So basically no of supermarkets. Yeah, so independent, off licenses, that type of thing, yeah. Um, or, so, or, or on on trade as well. Yeah, on on and off trade, uh, yeah. more like farm shops, wine merchants, delis, places like that. Right. Okay. Brilliant. So, what would you say uh, differentiates um, your business from other distilleries that might be out there? Um. So, I would just say that was super authentic. So, what you see is what you get. Like we've always said that we welcome all of our um, customers. We welcome anybody and everyone to come and watch how we make the gins. They can see the distillation, they can see what we farm, um, they can see it from cradle to grave, which I think is really important, um, giving people that traceability. My background was in food uh, product development where the main thing was giving that traceability and that authenticity about where your products come from and um, so that's something that we're, I'm really passionate about carrying through so that's the th first thing and the second thing is it is us so you're always going to see either myself or Rob um, at different places at meetings so at here you're always going to have one of us two here to talk you through so what you see is what you get basically and um, we don't sugarcoat it we don't hide it very small batch so we only make up to 100 bottles a batch so um if it isn't ready it doesn't go out and i think that's a, a really keen thing um with us that you know quality is key so we'd rather 
take the hit on something rather than, you know, label and bottle something that isn't ready. Mm. Great values as well. Good for you. So um, you've been in business five years almost. Yes. Uh, you've established yourself. You've got to where, you are, where you're at. What does the future hold? Um, what are the opportunities ahead and what are the challenges ahead? So we built the distillery that I'm sat in now in lockdown. Um, so that was finished in 2021, um, which has been brilliant because we've been able to welcome um, public um, Wednesday to Saturday. We do, um, we hold private functions. We do a lot of corporate um, functions and host meetings as well, which has been a really great turn for the business. Not something we were expecting to do when I first started distilling gin. Um, so that being said, we want to do more here. And um, ultimately, it's great to have your team on site. You know, with any in any line of business, it's just better being where you, you work. It's it, you feel more confident. You give people. It's all you can tell people about you until you're blue in the face. But until you come and see it, it that's when that passion shines. So the future for us is to bring as much possible back to this farm. Um, where we are and, and bring people through the door, really. Bring it to life, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And what challenges do you think might be around the corner in the next year or two? Well, I mean, we always say, and we've been saying it, for the media is our biggest challenge because whatever happened in the media reflects on sales here. Um, you know, you can be financially stable um, in life, but if the media tells us we're hitting a financial crisis, you automatically go, oh, right, well, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. So that is our biggest challenge. Um, obviously, things that are unexpected, um, they don't help as well. You know, um, you know any trauma um, in the media, which obviously you don't, you don't expect, but it can take a hit. So that is a challenge that we're constantly against. And I would say that that's our biggest up and down um, wave that we see in in drops and highs. So it's, um, yeah, I would say that's a difficult one. Um, trying to get across to different customers. You know, if they've had 100 gin brands, as I said before, the market is saturated. And if they've had 100 gin brands, contact them that week trying to get over in person or in the phone, in the 50 seconds you've got why you're different, that's always like exhausting really because we are different. But as a, from a buyer's point of view, you know, if you're trying to tell somebody why you're different, but you've already seen 50 that week, you know, who are you going to believe? So that's, that's always a challenge. But then we think, well, everything happens for a reason. And the stockists we've got, we're really lucky with because um, they do upsell our products because they know uh, the heritage behind them um so it's just it, but it is just a constant for us to keep that going really yeah keep keep uh, banging that message out yeah 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 exactly great so um five years you've uh, you've obviously um learned some things along the way what what, what are the key learnings for you during that five um, years Probably the confidence thing. So just having more confidence about what you're doing. Um, my pre my previous background um, was in the dairy industry and I found it so easy to sell um, somebody else's product. Like I was so passionate about it as if it was my own. It was the family's. So, you know, there was that element of that. But I think having all of the ownership on yourself totally changes you. So that... From when we started, I was almost nervous to sell. And I don't, you know, mind saying that because that's just a growth journey. Whereas now it's it's sort of having that confidence to say, well, actually, yeah, you should stock us because, you know, or you should buy us because we're really good. You know, what you see is what you get. We know, you know, what's in that gin and why that gin tastes good like it does. But it's a difficult thing to, to, to gain that confidence and especially gain that confidence while still remaining humble. I say that all the time. Anybody that, if I, like obviously now we are um, selling different things in the distillery, anybody walks in here and starts 
you know, cockily telling me that theirs is the best, la, la, la. It's an instant no for me. I want to see, you know, the humble side at all times. So I think that's really important as well. But there's a balance, isn't there? You've got to, you've got to be confident in what you're doing. Um, and having, and I think it, it just comes with experience. Well, that authentic passion is shining through loud and clear. I'm, oh, I'm, God. That's what, I'm glad. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> one last question then, Lizzie. A um, uh, bit of a hypothetical one, but um, with the benefit of hindsight, knowing what you now know, what might you do differently if you could turn the clock back five years? Frankie, what would I do differently? Um, interesting. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. I'd have to have a think. I think uh, we don't regret anything um, because we... I think everything you've got to take as a learning. So I've always said this, like there might be things I'll have done differently, but actually would it make us the people we are today in business um, and, and you know, in the way we do everything, how we employ people. I think it's all a learning curve, isn't it? So yes, we've had learnings for sure, but probably nothing I would have done differently because it always gives you um, more of a backbone, doesn't it, to, to keep going yeah, and strengthens you. I've got Oasis. You've got to roll with it in my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. Brilliant, Lizzie. Thank you very much, and I wish you all the best for the future. Yeah, you too. I'll hope to chat, chat, chat soon. Thanks.